Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the water bubble tutorial of in, in Inkscape. So it's the water bubble type tutorial in Inkscape. So I've got my type here and I've got my background here which is just an image, wallpaper image of droplets I downloaded and I put a blue um, 70 transparency um, box over it. Okay, and the bubble is not a font. This is not a font. I had to, um, I couldn't find a, a bubbly font that was free. So what I did then is just, I decided to hand type this. So if I just go ahead and next door, copy and paste. Yeah, you can see this is the scan of the hand type that I did. Good. Now this effect can be used for any type that you use. I just wanted this one to look bubbly, so I'm going to use this one. Okay then, so let's move into it. By default, I have them separated, so I'm just going to duplicate them. And then combine them. I, I do that by going to Path and Combine. Oops. Oh, it's combined already? Okay, awesome. Good. And then for the first part, I'm just going to make this white so that I can see what's happening. Good. So the first thing I want to do is that I'm going to duplicate it and then I'm going to go to path and dynamic offset and with the dynamic offset you'll see this diamond here that you can pull. So I'm going to do this duplicate that I did with um, control and D. I'm going to go ahead and turn it red and I'm going to hold control a little well I'm just going to pull it down. Oh, we have snapping on. Let me just turn off snapping. So I'm going to pull this diamond down and we see that the offset is being updated real time. And that's what's meant by a dynamic offset. So we can control this. This is a great addition to Inkscape. I'm so happy I found it because I use inset and offset a lot. So, and this also works for offset, but it's, um, it's called dynamic offset. So it works for inset and offset, but it's called dynamic offset. And you have to pull this diamond node right here. Okay, so we've got an okayish one here. About this is good for now. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate, I'm gonna hold shift and select the inset and this, duplicate it. And to set this inset, I'm just gonna hold, go ahead and hit control, shift and C. Good. This inset works like a path effect. So you'll have to go to path and object to path to set the effects of the inset. Or you can hit control shift and C as I do, or as I did. Okay, so now that we have that, we're just gonna select these two holding shift, the inset and the original, which is the white. And we're going to difference this. So we're gonna go to path and difference. And that will give me this. Will that give me this? Yeah, I think that will give me this. Oh, wait. Let me just shift it to the side a bit. Because we want it to have a bit of blur. So we're just shifting it to the side a bit. Like this. So, you know, just holding control and shifting it. So that the, the white outline looks like a 3D. Outline to the left. So you can just increment it up to your right side and up and that will give you this and then we're going to do the same thing which is the, the, as we did before which is a difference path and difference and that will give me this white outline here good i'm going to change this to a black and we're going to just give it a slight blur good all right now this will give me a drop shadow effect now i did you could use the filter for the drop um, shadow effect, but I decided that this one's actually better because I don't have to worry about um, it retaining the original shape that was drop shadowed, you know, and that gives me a bit more control. So we have the bubble right here and we have our drop shadow. Good, so for the next part, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate these two once more. You know, we've so holding shift and selecting both the white and the red, duplicate it with control and D, and we're gonna go ahead and make the top. So to do that, 
let's go ahead and just come down here oh we're gonna have to reinsert this no the inset is still on so i'm just going to increase it a bit more but i want it a bit higher like this i think this looks good good and then we're going to difference these two again so i'm just going to go ahead and hit Control shift and c to set the inset select the white and we're going to go to path and difference good so we have our drop shadow and we have a blue border at top and i'm going to give this a blue good and let's go ahead and just give it the color blue awesome well, let's make this even slightly darker if you want to so we have a shadow and a blue border here good and that will make for the start of this so the next part that we're going to do is that we want to actually have our background so i'm going to go here let's drag this down for a bit duplicate it and bring it down so that we have it underneath here let's give it a different color and we're going to concentrate on the one that we have here good so this one we want it to be this color blue good and then we're going to open up our layers so we're going to go to object it's an object and layers is layers this way have fine layers again no layers has its own tab sorry and we're going to go ahead and show layers up oh. all right we're going to go ahead and open up the layers dialog box you can hit Control shift and l to do that add a plus sign good and this top uh, we're going to add one more one more plus sign yeah and this is going to be the middle one's going to be the overlay good so we're going to go ahead and just use Control and x which is going to cut that blue that we had here i'm going to select layer two here and we're going to hit Control alt and v which pastes the blue text in the exact position for which it was cut and if we take this out we notice that um this is indeed on the second layer good and everything else is on the first layer good so we've got that right now so the next thing we want to do is that we want to make this um screen i'm going to use a blend mode screen good and that's going to give us this bright blue here and will allow the bubbles from underneath to show Right, and already we've got a sort of bubbly effect because of this so things are looking good so far all right so for the next step what we want to do we're going to bring up our we're going to bring up our duplicated bubble that we duplicated beforehand and i'm going to go to layer 3 and just paste it with Control shift and v and bring it up that way it's above yeah, we want it above our overlay here that we have with the screen mode and we're going to go ahead and just bring this down a bit so we can see what's happening come up a bit closer all right so the next part here with that we're going to just duplicate it once more and uh, with control and d and then we're going to go to path and dynamic inset offset once more Gonna drag this in a bit and uh, let's give it a different color so we can see it differently I think this looks about right could be a little bit thinner but it looks about right good and then we're gonna duplicate it once more with Control and D and we're gonna bring it down a bit more and give it a different color just a gray or so so that we can sort of tear it apart or red Good, so we want to just set the inset for both of these. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift and C. And for the one above, Control Shift and C. We're gonna select these two, the last two that we've duplicated. And let's just make sure we check what's going on here. Right, and we're just going to if I bring them out a bit so that we can see it a bit better. Right. I want it such that 
right we have this right here so we can see that the outline is on the edge and we can see it all here it's looking pretty good and we're going to go to path and difference good now, now with this done we're going to inset this one final time path and go to dynamic offset and we're just going to just bring it in until we get these lines good then we're going to go ahead and just drag this back in and let's turn it to be white good and we can see that this is giving us the nice bubble outlines that we're looking for but they're going to need to be neatened up a bit so the next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to set this with Control shift and c convert it to a path and we can go in here manually and sort of just get rid of you know some of the things that aren't contributing and to the actual shape to stuff so we're just going to go around and see what's needs to be sort of removed and just delete some of these and then we're going to go ahead and just give this a small blur awesome all right and even with this blur you can go ahead and just sort of mess about with it a bit more until you get what you're looking for but that gives us this bob our bubble effect here uh, that gives us that sort of extrusion effect and if we remove the blue that we had duplicated there we see that we have our outline too good awesome yeah this looking good all right we don't want this so black let's go ahead and see if we can make this a blue cool it's a blue it's a blue yeah I think that's about right ever so gentle with the blur okay then good so the last that we can use now we have the shadow in the back but in case you don't think the shadow in the back is enough then we can always just go ahead and use the final duplicate that we had made and the inset that we had made of it let me just go ahead and copy this inset good and we can difference these two path and difference let's make this white so that we can see what's actually happening and make this blue good and then we can go ahead and blur this so gently blur and we can make this a slightly darker blue okay, this is good and we can just lift this up and put it on top and select the blur and this and clip it set clip and place the clip over the text for the final blue effect and that is the end of the Inkscape water bubble text tutorial we've used extensively the dynamic offset as well as the boolean tools to get this effect really really nice effect can be used for any type that you want to use it for you know um good for these type of projects that you have i hope you enjoy this tutorial if you have any questions be sure to ask them in the comments um if you have any suggestions you know be free to add them that helps the community that adds helps me that helps everyone and i appreciate that i don't presume to know everything so if you have any um, information feel free to share it you know but until i see you again with another instant tutorial get up and design and you don't wait up